Well, hello there, friend, and welcome back to the Choosing to Heal podcast. I have the funniest, most ironic thing to share with you today. I think you're going to get a kick out of it in the same way that I did. So I was getting ready to prep and outline this episode. And I was like, what do I want to talk about? And I do this, like I'll plan in advance topics for the podcast. And I wrote down this title idea called how to get ahead and get stuff done because I was trying to batch record these episodes in preparation of going on a trip to Jamaica. So I wanted to make sure that I was ahead instead of feeling behind. (laughs) So I had all these plans. I was like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. Everyone would love to know how to get ahead and get stuff done. Well, guess what? (laughs) Fast forward to the day before the trip and nothing is ahead of schedule. I mean, I felt so behind. And the irony being that I was not at all ahead and I didn't even get a chance to record the episode before I left because we had a total passport fiasco and we realized that Joshua's passport was like, I guess it has to be valid six months past the day you get back. So all I knew is it wasn't expired. So I didn't think about it. Anyway, long story short, we had to go get a new passport for him, go to the same day, like Atlanta agency to get a same day passport. So my entire workday went out the window, didn't even get a chance to record that episode. <laughs> So all that to say, I'm back from Jamaica and we have pivoted the topic from how to get ahead and get stuff done to how to make peace with an unfinished to-do list because that feels so much more on brand. (laughs) It is so much more accurate and in alignment with reality. Am I right? And it's just so funny to me to think about like how many times I feel ahead instead of feeling behind. I honestly can't even think of a time. It is way more common at the end of the day where I'm like, man, I really did not get to anything. So I guess the win here is that I didn't actually go and record that episode because what a freaking hypocrite I would be. (laughs) So today we're going to talk about how to make peace with your unfinished to-do list. So let's get to it, shall we? So many times I suck at taking my own advice. Like how many times have you heard me say you can do anything but not everything and like learn how to say no and all of these things. And yet I still fall victim and fall into the trap of trying to do everything and trying to get it all done. And so I'm still a work in progress and I'm still constantly learning and having to practice letting go of these things. So it's not like I've just like magically woke up and learned how to not be a workaholic and not be a perfectionist. And I still do want to get all the things done. I still do want to be ahead. I still have those urges. Healing isn't getting rid of the problem right? It's not like, oh, I'll feel better when I get my to-do list done. And that what should have been my indicator. Like I know better than to try and record an episode about the solution being about the end result, because that actually is trying to control our circumstance in hopes that we'll feel better. And that's exactly what I was trying to do with that episode or with that topic. Like, let's get ahead so we don't feel this way. I was able to catch myself and go, no, Monica, you're literally trying to control the situation to feel better. So again, the focus here is all about managing (laughs) that guilt and that anxiety and that overwhelm that comes with that ever familiar feeling of being behind. And I'm sure you know what that feels like. And it can be so easy to feel guilty or ashamed of all the things that you're not getting done. It's like bad enough that it didn't happen. And then, you know, if you're anything like me, you'll take it a step further and give yourself a good guilt trip while you're at it, which is not helpful. We know that, right? And sometimes guilt can be a good motivator. Sometimes when you feel guilty, it can be kind of that kick in the pants that you need. But I want to point out that there's a difference between guilt and shame. And before we move on to shame, another thing about guilt is it's not helpful when you're not in a position to do anything about it. You know, if you feel guilty because you feel like you haven't talked to your mom in a while, well, guilt can be a good motivator in that you have something to do about it. You can pick up the phone and call her and you don't have to feel guilty anymore. But if you're feeling guilt about things that you literally have no control over, if we don't learn how to manage that guilt, all it's going to do is cause unnecessary anxiety that you know all about. And so I think it's really important to be mindful about 
guilt that comes from things that we do have control over and can change, like a healthy amount of guilt. But then I think what's more familiar um, and what I'm talking about today is the unhealthy guilt that tends to spiral and lead to shame. And shame is like feeling bad, not because of something you've done. It's like feeling bad about who you are, right? It's like guilt is, okay, I feel bad because I didn't call my mom or I feel bad because I didn't do that. But shame is, man, I'm really lazy or I am such a failure because I didn't do this. It's attached to our identity rather than our behaviors. And that's really, really dangerous territory. And that's why it is really important to learn this stuff because shame never results in anything good. Shame is where we can really stay stuck for a very long time and it can be hard to work through. And one of the things that makes these emotions, guilt and shame, even more painful is ruminating. It's like having these repetitive thoughts about something over and over and over again. And, you know, how many times have you been out and about or at the end of the workday, you go to dinner with your family or you are trying to have quality time and these things are just like stuck in the back of your head. Like all you're thinking about is your unfinished to-do list. All you're thinking about is like, man, I really wish I was at home finishing up these things so I could feel better. That's another indicator that it's time to get these thoughts in check, time to capture these thoughts recognize that these feelings of guilt and shame are owning the story right now, ruling the show, so we can do something about it. So I'm going to get to tips for what you can do if you find yourself in that place of feeling guilty or feeling anxious or shame that you didn't get everything done. But first, I want to talk about prevention, things that you can do to prevent yourself getting to that place to begin with. And it's helpful to know both, right? Because of course, like we can take preventative action. It's helpful so that we don't end up there as easily, but it's also unrealistic to expect that we won't ever get to that place. So we're going to talk about both today. So prevention, you knew at some point in this episode, I was going to tell you (laughs) that you have to learn how to say no. Saying no, I feel like I beat this like a dead horse boundaries. Saying no, you got to say no. Well, guess what? In this situation, super helpful if you say no. Something else that I want you to remember, especially if you're a people pleaser, we've talked about this. We did a whole episode on people pleasing recently, but I want you to remember that every time you say yes to something, you are also saying no to something else. So when you say yes to helping your neighbor with something, when you already have an extended to-do list and you've maxed out on your capacity to handle things and you still say yes, well, guess what? You're saying no to your mental wellness. You're saying no to self-care. You're saying no to quality time with your family. You're saying no to your own priorities. And I think when you're able to look at it with that sort of perspective, it really like changes the game, right? It really does give you that perspective. And that really helps me because it's so easy to think, oh, we're saying yes. And so we're being kind and we're being helpful. And we focus on like the positive things that come from saying yes. And so thinking about that can really give you that healthy reality check to evaluate the pros and cons. Like, is it really worth it for me to take this extra thing on? Especially, you know, we're, today we're talking about a never ending to do list. Chances are you already are overwhelmed with things that you can't get done. So the easiest thing that you can do to prevent yourself from getting there is to not add those things to your plate to begin with. So just going back to basics, evaluating, taking that pause before you say yes to something and asking yourself, is it really worth it? What are the consequences and the costs if I say yes to this thing? And do I still want to say yes as an intentional yes, knowing that? rather than a reactive yes out of my people-pleasing tendencies. Something else that you can do to prevent yourself from getting to a place where you have a million things on your list that are unfinished is to focus on your one thing. Um, This is something that Gary Keller has taught about. So your one thing is what one thing can you do that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? So it's kind of like eating the frog, right? So for example, there's so many things throughout the day that are constantly cropping up, whether it's like emails or messages, buying groceries, washing the car, doing laundry. 
But when you take a step back and think about what would move the needle forward, well, when I was going to Jamaica, was it really a priority for me to wash the car before I go? No. Is it really going to be helpful for me to buy groceries or meal plan for when I get back? Not necessarily. The biggest thing that would move the needle and make the biggest impact with what is the biggest priority was packing <laughs> and recording the episode. I call these things dependencies. And this has actually been super helpful for me when looking at my task list or my to-do list is identifying which tasks hold up other tasks. Those are dependencies rather than just like nice to do tasks. So nice to do things are like things that don't have a consequence if they don't get done. Packing, there's a huge consequence. If I don't pack, then I don't have what I need for my trip. If I don't record the episode, then I get behind on my work and my podcast producer can't continue to edit the things, it holds up other things. A lot of the times, gosh, I've been so guilty of this. If we're in a reactive state, if we think of something, we'll just go do it. It's like, oh, I forgot to text my friend back. Let me go do this. Oh, I just remembered that I want to order that thing from Amazon real fast. And we'll go reactively do these things. And as you know, that eats up so much of our time. And so if you can brain dump all the things that you have to do and take a highlighter to them, I highlight them yellow in my Google Calendar, especially for work. I have work blocks, which are things that, yes, need to be done. But then I have my yellow highlighted task, my dependencies tasks. And these are things that need to be done. But if they don't get done, there will be consequences. If I don't respond to messages at seven in the morning, it's not a big deal. Like those can be pushed around. But if I don't outline my episode, well, then I can't record it. So I want to make sure that I do that and I prioritize that before I prioritize shopping on Amazon or these other things that can be pushed around and aren't time sensitive. I want to switch gears a little bit into really dissecting what we're trying to accomplish. What is the reason why we're so anxious and what is it that's causing the guilt to begin with? It's like we're always chasing after this end goal. And we think that when this gets done, I'll be happier. I'll feel less stressed. So that is our motivator. It's like, I know that I feel anxious right now and I feel stressed. So I want to eliminate the things on my to-do list so I won't feel this. But what if instead of managing that unrest that we feel and managing that anxiety when things aren't done, we learned how to internally manage those emotions? What if we learned how to shift our focus and our perspective from the things that are undone to what we're going to lose by doing those things? We tend to be so focused on the discomfort we feel when things aren't done that we forget about the discomfort and the consequences that come as a result of sacrificing all the things in the name of getting them done. What's really gonna matter in the grand scheme of things? If I was so focused on getting ahead before I went on this trip to Jamaica, because I didn't wanna feel the stress of being behind when I got home. And so I brought my laptop on the trip with me. And when I woke up in paradise, I answered a few emails. I worked on some stuff. So I would feel good about like being ahead when I got back. Well, it sounds nice on the surface, but if we don't evaluate the cost of doing that, what I would lose sight of is losing that precious time with my partner, being present with him in this beautiful place that I don't get to be in every day that who knows if I'll even get a chance to go back. I'm losing out on that. And when you really zoom out and think about like the big picture perspective, are you really going to remember, oh man, I remember that trip to Jamaica and I'm just, I'm so glad that I answered those emails. I'm so glad that I drafted that newsletter. I'm so glad that I outlined that podcast episode. Like, is that how you really want to remember the trip and the memories versus when I think of this trip just now, I remember having that presence with Joshua and just like being able to look into each other's eyes and have all of our distractions completely eliminated and just being with each other. That's what I want to remember. Those are the memories and the moments I want to create in my life. And if we're not careful, that lure of wanting to get things done, they'll completely take over and prevent us from creating those intentional moments that do really matter in the big picture that you actually will remember. It's just so ironic how in the moment, every day, day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute, it's like we're focused on the tiny little tasks. But when we zoom out big picture, 
so much of our time is spent on these things that don't actually matter. I guess that that was my first tip in helping manage this. When I find myself getting caught in the lure of wanting to get all the things done is visualizing how it would feel to get stuff done versus have that presence and quality time, whatever the pros and cons are. I'm going to visualize how it would feel to be in Jamaica on my laptop, then compare it to what it would feel like to let those things go and be present and to create intentional memories, to make choices that act in alignment with the memories and the life you want to create in the big picture and the grand scheme of things. What do you want your life to be about? And is checking your email on vacation going to support that dream of what you want your life to be about? You know, what I find to be tricky about this is there's like this fine line, like, of course, we need to get stuff done. I guess what this episode is more focusing on and what I'm talking about specifically is beyond the non-negotiables because we all have the non-negotiables. Like we have to do certain things to pay our bills, to stay alive, that kind of stuff. I'm not saying like to let go of literally everything on your to-do list. I'm talking about all of the things that like 90% of small BS that we worry about and we spend so much energy about that we do not need to be holding on to. That's what I mean. I know for me, that's where I get stuck all the time. That is where I need to learn how to let go. It sounds so cliche to be like, oh, stay mindful, be present. But that's why mindfulness is so important. Because when we're not mindful and we're not self-aware and we're not present, we're reactive. When we're in a reactive state, it's impossible to be intentional. And when we're not intentional, we can't create the life that we want that is in alignment with our beliefs and our values and our true desires. And that's why it all starts with that mindfulness. And that's why it's such an important thing to practice every day and which is why we do so many mindfulness activities inside of the Choosing to Heal community is because if you're not exercising that muscle when it really matters in these moments where you feel overwhelmed with things, you can't just expect to pull it out of your butt, you know, when you haven't been practicing it. Just like if you don't practice running and you go to run a marathon when it truly matters, like the New York Marathon, you're not going to do well. I feel like so many times with these episodes, I'm speaking from a place of personal experience or these episodes are inspired by my own shortcomings, like my own recent things that are going on in my life. And so perfect example, last night, Joshua and I, usually it's our like tradition or our ritual for connection to play wingspan. I've talked about that before on the episode all about the conflict cycle. I talked about how we play wingspan every night. Well, anyway, long story short, he could just tell that there was a lot weighing on me and it's because we are two days back from vacation and I'm feeling the weight of like being behind and he could tell that I just wasn't in the mental space to be super present and spend our quality time together like we normally do. And so instead of doing that, he was like, do you want to talk about it? And so I did. And I just shared with him like all the things I was stressing about that were on my mind, right? Like I'm so behind on this, so behind on that. And there's just not enough time in the day. And I already identified my non-negotiables and I don't even have time to do those, let alone all the other things that are like nice to do, but they still have to get done and blah, 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 blah. And gosh, this man, side note, but also related, he has the most stressful job. I could never do what he does. He manages a company that sells wheelchair accessible vehicles. And the amount of stories he comes home and tells me, like things that go wrong or problems that crop up or difficult people he has to deal with, it stresses me out to the core. But I will say, I'll give it to him. He comes home and has this uncanny ability to leave it behind. The minute that man steps in the door, I am the only thing he is focusing on, me, the kids, our time together. He does not let it get to him. If I had to deal with the things that he did and I was trying to play games together, I would be in La La Land. I would be literally in mental turmoil, stressing about how I was going to have to show up to work and deal with this stress tomorrow. And so I asked him last night, I was like, I just don't understand how you do it. He's learned how to take each thought captive and zoom out and focus on what matters in the big picture. I guess it just inspires me to see someone who has every valid reason to be like stressed out beyond belief, just be like so at peace amid all this chaos. So yeah, I guess that was the biggest thing that I took away from the conversation I had with him last night was 
the importance of holding thoughts captive, recognizing when they pop up and then redirecting back to, oh yeah, I'm right here on the couch. I'm looking into my partner's eyes. This is what's most important right now. And then practicing acceptance in those moments. You did everything that you could and there's literally nothing more that you need to do right now in this moment. There really isn't. I know you. it feels that way and you feel like you will feel better if you do, but if you really pause to think about it, practicing acceptance and learning how to let go is literally just recognizing and redirecting back to the present moment. It's letting go of letting it dominate your attention and your focus. And then just remember like you're not a failure just because you don't get everything done. Like it doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes you a person. Imagine what it would be like to spend each of those time blocks intentionally focusing on exactly what you were doing in the moment. That's the ultimate goal. And so what's happening when we're stressed out is it's spilling over into these other areas where it doesn't belong. Having that confidence and knowing that, you know what, all these stressors, all these unfinished things are going to be there for me when I show up to work tomorrow. And that's when I will get to think about them. That's when I'm going to allow myself to focus on them and setting those internal boundaries. Man, that is so hard. It's one thing to start by learning boundaries with others, right? Like saying no to external things, but setting internal boundaries is equally important, if not more important to learn how to do because we are managing our own energy and our own thoughts and deciding when we are allowing ourselves to give those things energy. I just hope that it encourages you that, it's totally human <laughs> to fall into those patterns of thinking time and time and time again. So my friend, with that, I'm going to go record one more episode because it is time blocked on my calendar. This is the time when I get to think about the podcast and doing things for it. And I hope that you stay focused on whatever it is that you are intentionally doing today in your time box, in your schedule, and let's just make a commitment, a pack together to let go of the rest, accept what we are unable to get to, and remember all that we have to be grateful for and what really matters in the big picture, in the grand scheme of things. It's not about checking a to-do list. Like, are we really going to be thinking about that on our deathbed, what we didn't get done on September 27th or whenever it is? No. So that will be our reminder for today. And I will see you on the next episode, friend.